Good day, Chuck Cameron here, OCTV. This session, you'll hear on the view from the top from Tim London, who's heads of our township building department. Tim talks a lot about the issues that are involved with buildings and, and safety and the things that we all may not know about, but that the building department has a big responsibility for. So I hope you'll enjoy hearing about Tim's responsibilities and what they all do well. Also, Matt Majestic, our fire chief, uh, Matt's got a lot to say specifically about this coming election and the need to go out and vote. The fire department millage is un involved in the ballot and we hope you will you, we hope you will see fit to approve that. And third, Rod Charles, one of our township trustees. Rod also has a lot to say, especially about this coming election and not only asking you to vote, but also challenging you to after you vote, volunteer, get out and live your vote. So. I uh, hope you'll enjoy this week's View from the Top. Okay, we're sitting here with Tim London. Tim, thank you for taking time. I appreciate getting to know you a little bit today. How you doing? Good morning. Excellent. I'm doing well. Um, we wanted to give you a chance to tell the community and the folks who are watching um, what your department does, how you, what kind of challenges you face in your department, and uh, if how you like the job. Our department deals with uh, life, safety, and welfare of the community, okay. which entails new buildings, existing buildings. Uh, say ordinance regulations, uh, blight, you know, number of different avenues, I guess uh, you'd say, with uh, community, which improves, helps maintain or improve property values, um, you know, with a number of housing coming in. Uh, everything's moving north. Everything north is moving south. So, I mean, it's coming. So a lot of it is just trying to keep everything uh, in compliance with our current ordinances and meet the needs of the township. So how many on your staff and what are your primary responsibilities there? Oh, my responsibilities oversee the building department and planning and zoning department and try to ensure, like I said, compliance with all state and applicable codes, uh, laws, and um, or, or township ordinances. And from there, implement that in the community. Not everyone likes it because yep. uh, it's rules. <laughs> we don't make the rules, but we have to enforce them. Uh, I try to tell people that all the time. It's not Oxford's rules. So to, mostly it's, it's state law. Um, okay. And so we do that. And I have Stacy and Cheryl. Uh, Stacy's our uh, administrative assistant okay. in the building department. And Cheryl Otan is... Uh, Playing his zoning uh, executive, I guess you'd say. She kind of handles the main duties there, and I oversee, and we've implemented a number of changes since I've been here uh, in three years trying to improve relationship with builders and improve processes uh, for new developments that come in. You make me think of something. I I hear that there are you know, this area or this, this undeveloped area or this golf course or this, this thing is being considered for, you know, changing into maybe being a place where there's a new subdivision. Are there any things that have been announced? I won't ask you what's in the works because that's not appropriate, but are there any big plans for development that have been announced? And if so, how does that affect your department and what you do? Well, we have two subdivisions. One has been approved, which is over off Drainer on the south end next to the new sub Tullamore, uh, the Sanctuary Hills. Right. And then we have another one that's preliminary okay. approved on the north side of Drainer Road, um, just on the south side of, I think, Oxford Hills, right there at the village area at uh, Glasby and Drainer. Sure. Um, and so they're working through state requirements right now trying to acquire permits and once all that happens they would be coming back in for uh, final approval from us and 
it affects my department. I mean, that's, uh, you know, 240 plus new units that will be coming in. And it sounds like a lot. I mean, there's a number of duplexes and they should be similar to what you see at Enclaves that's going on right as right now. Okay. And that's another project, the phase three of that, which is just 22 units, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it'll keep us busy uh, sure. for sure. And with inspections, plan reviews, just everything else that goes along with the building. Lots going on. Is it is it fair to say when I drive around here, you guys, you folks have got a very clear view of this. For for me, driving on the main streets, it seems like blessedly there's lots of undeveloped property here. There's forest and field and stuff like that that hasn't been built, and I think that's one of the things that makes our town township uh, appealing, really nice. Is it if you had to push out? five years, eight years in the future, would you expect that it's likely that more and more of those undeveloped properties are going to be appealing for developers to put in, I suppose, subdivisions or other kinds of commercial stuff maybe? Uh, yes, there's a number of properties that 5, 10, 20 years down the road definitely are going to be developed uh, at some point. Uh, depending on what type of development uh, happens there, would all based on your zoning. Uh, is your zoning, whether it's R1, R2, R3, or SF1, you know, suburban farms, SF2, SF3, or aggregate, that depends on the size lot you have. And then you got the water and sewer districts. So is water available? Is sewer available? And then that really dictates the size lots that would be allowed on a parcel. Okay. Uh, so the way the zoning is right now, um, in current zoning, I should say, right. certain properties are going to develop, but they're going to be large parcels. Okay. You know, you get in the north of the township, they're 10 acre lots, 25 acre lots. I mean, they're, that's not going to change. Okay. Now you might have someone that owns a hundred acre lot. Right. Well, they may sp split up one day into smaller lots, but they're still going to be 25 acre lots. None of that's changing right now. Um, you know, I can't speak for 20 years down the road or the direction, but, um, you know, the idea of our ordinances and what we do is try to do what's beneficial for the township by also, but I mean, grow growth is inevitable. It's going to happen. Uh, well, that's, I suppose that's a two the standard two edged sword. We people like things the way they are because that's why they moved here and that's why they stay here. But at the same time, growth enables new folks to come in and enjoy our town, our township. Yep, and that's what attracts people here. So more and more people want to come and live in yep. the community. Uh, you know, that's what brought some here ten years ago because they liked it. Well, ten years later, we have so many more this many more population than it was in 10 years. So it just continues because down South, you know, like certain communities might have a population of 75,000 people and 36 square miles. Well, yep. at some point they don't want to live there anymore. And they, or the children grow up and they yep. got to move somewhere, but want to stay yep. close. I mean, it's just, it's inevitable. We are, I've always, I always smile, come up 24 and it's, Town, 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 business, business, you know, subdivision, and then we get <laughs> north, north of Meyer, and we are in the country here. Yes, compared to yep. other communities, we are, uh, but they're growing, uh, whether it's Oakland Township or Addison or Brandon, right. us. I mean, they're, they're all growing at their own pace, but mm -hmm. they are definitely getting bigger. What are the boundaries of our township? Uh, what a, we're Baldwin Road all the way up to Davis Lake Road okay. over, what is it, uh, Bar Road, that area there, and then down to Indian Lake Road. So we've got a lot of north left to to enjoy as an undeveloped area, and the possibility is that some of that might be developed in the future? Um, Long Ray Road, you know, really you got American aggregates. I mean, there's a lot of properties they own that um they're going to be reclaimed one day sure. and they're not going to sit vacant any longer they'll be used like you got 24 also where commercial 
Yep. You know, you got it's a ma major thorough yep. thoroughfare here in Oxford, and all the way up to 69. So I mean, it's it's gonna grow, and commercial will come. You might have industrial. You might have hospitals. You know, eventually. You know, uh, it just it it all takes time, but. So you're sounding like you're going to keep busy for at least the next few weeks. Oh, yeah, definitely. Right. Yep. Well, we thank you for taking a few minutes to talk to us about what you and your departments do uh, with the understanding that although people don't like to follow the rules, you have to make sure that the rules get followed to, to keep us in, in check. Is that about right? Uh, yes. Uh, the whole objective, like I said, is, is life, safety, and welfare of the community. Um and it's also maintaining a minimum level of living, you know, uh, as people move in, um, you know, they may want the, you know, the subdivision, they don't want the neighbors to just not mow their yard or not take care of things and let everything run down. Got it. Okay. You know, so you know, looks lighting, here. <laughs> lighting is gone. So apparently, I haven't paid my bills this week. So, well, Tim, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. And your your team, we thank you for what you folks do to keep things to keep things the right way. So, thank you again. Thank you. Good to talk to you. Yep. So, for Tim, this is Chuck saying, we'll see you next time. Excellent. Chief Majestic, thank you very much for taking the time to talk with us today. Thanks for coming. Yep. You know that the drill here is this is the view from the top. So what we want to do is figure out what issues, what situations are important to you and your crews here that the community ought to know about. So what's what's on the top of your list, sir? Oh, boy. Right now, uh, obviously, uh, like everybody's... Um, uh, obviously, in the election, we've got our millage up for renewal, sure. and our um, our millage renewal is an increase with a renewal. Um, and I know that's hard to swallow, but well, we've been just absolutely beaten by inflation um, and the costs that we've been getting hit with. Some of our maintenance costs and things like that have you know doubled on hourly rates and stuff like that. And so that's been that's been very difficult and. Um, also the fact that our millage expires or technically had expired already. And so now come January one, we actually have zero funding. So, um, that's been, that's, that's my big hot topic, um, you know, and being able to still provide service to the community. So we're hoping that people will do, um, you know, take that into consideration when they go to the the, the, the polling booth or, or, or sure. while they're sitting at the dinner table filling out their absentee ballot. Uh, you know, uh, just please keep that in mind that this is our only funding source. And um, while I, I hated asking for a, a, an increase on it, um, you know, I worked closely with uh, Treasurer Ferrari and uh, our auditor um, and the township supervisor and the clerk um, to um, say, well, what's the what's the what's the least amount we can ask for yeah. to be able to make ends meet and you know look forward and be able to pay, pay our bills and and pr continue to provide services and so that's what we've done. Um, so I know it's not something anybody wants, um, myself included. Um, but it's the reality of where we are. And so we're completely dependent on the folks now to you know, support the department. So you looked at numbers yeah. and you came to a conclusion that you, is this correct? Cause I don't want to put words in your mouth that you guys would need, your teams would need more than we've had before. And you've asked for that more in part because what you've had before is running out at the first of the year. Yeah. We have nothing uh, January one. Nothing. It's going to be hard to run the department with zero. With zero it would be diff very difficult. You know, um, I'm not a big um, accountant guy or a legal guy as far as the 
the the rules and the, the how things work. But I my understanding is with the Headley rollback, mm -hmm. what we'll end up doing is uh, back to levying a millage very similar to what our current one is, but due to rollback, it's less. And so now with the increase, it'll actually get us to where we were, Is if I'm understanding how the Headley rollback stuff works. Um, and again, I'm not a tax guy, so you know, please take that. Um, and then the other thing is, again, renewal increase. And so um, what does that look like from what I'm, what has been relayed to me from the the financial folks right. um, is about an $85 increase on your winter tax bill above what you had paid per $100,000 SEV. Okay. So uh, again, I'm not the, I'm not the tax guy and, and, and I don't have the best understanding, but I'm, I'm learning. <laughs> you're learning trial by fire, so yeah. to speak, you know, using the fire joke, right? Indeed. Well, it's, it seems to me like, and I, I don't speak for the community, but um, whatever the department needs to get things done and keep us safe and keep transport to the emergencies and stuff like that, uh, we we value your services a lot. And so what it, you told me last time I interviewed you that the vast majority of your service to the community now isn't putting out fires as much as it is transportation of people in medical situations. Is that still correct? Yeah, that is. And I would say as a whole throughout the, throughout the fire service in general, nationwide, um, for those communities that have taken on the role of EMS, like, like we have, um, it, it works out to, depending on the community, depending on population densities, uh, the EMS takes up about somewhere between 70, 75, 80% of your call volume. And then the rest is then the fire stuff. Um, but sadly, again, where do you need the most people when you, when it does happen is a fire, obviously. Um, but then we're still in that, the, the predicament of the fact that we're so far from hospitals. And I, and I know, uh, supervisor Curtis has been a huge champion of trying to, uh, uh, take care of that for us. And we support him hundred percent on that. We've gone to Lansing with him on that, uh, and trying to do something about that has been, a, a, an uphill battle that we continue to fight because when we get an EMS call, you know, from time of call to response to the residents or wherever the call may be business, what have you, um, and then care for the person and then transport them and then get back. Uh, our turnaround time is, you know, transporting anywhere from, I don't know, maybe 18, 16, 18, 25 miles mm -hmm. uh, round trip. And so the ambulance is gone out of the community for anywhere from hour and a half, two hours, two and a half hours on the long end, depending on like today, I know we had a pediatric uh, patient I, um, that we transported all the way to Royal Oak Beaumont. You know, so stuff like that, you know, that's an, that's that much more time that an ambulance is out of the community. And we're with our growth, with the, with the residential growth that we've seen with the businesses doing like doing as well as they are, um, we're busier than we've been, you know? Well, that's good because that means that we've got a lot going on, but it keeps you guys on edge. Right? It's not so much good. I wouldn't say it's, you know, um, we're busy though. Right. And we're getting busier every Every year today has been one hectic day. Um, if you'd have been here a few minutes ago, I wouldn't have been here. We, okay. we had a car accident that we just went to. And so it's just, um, and we're trying to do, you know, and, and get things covered, right? And um, I can't, I, I'm the, I think I'm one of the most, um, I don't know, uh, negative about it because I, I hate asking for more. Yep. Um, I'm trying to, you know, run the organization as fiscally responsible as we can. And it's a challenge, you know, as I was telling you earlier off record, uh, how some of our, uh, even our maintenance costs, uh, the, the hourly bills that we receive from the, the mechanics and, and, and the different vendors and stuff, how they've just, you know, doubled uh, on some, some of them have more than doubled. And it's just been tough, you know, and uh, our income didn't double, you know, so, um, you know, we're, we're getting by um, right now, but again, that's that's the thing that's keeping me up nights is how are we going to continue to provide service and take care of everybody. Excellent. Okay, so how long, if this millage passes, which I certainly hope it will, how long does that stream of money last? The, the next millage, if passed, is going to be a six-year millage. 
Um, and our hopes are to then sh shoot for just a renewal after that. And hopefully, again, we just don't know, though, right? Um, we, init we initially wanted to go for an eight-year prior to everything getting bad so that we wouldn't have to keep asking, right? Um, and just become better stewards of our money. Then they, we had looked at a four-year, but then we were just like, look, if we, if we keep asking, people are going to get tired of that. So let's find a happy medium. That's why we settled on the six. Um, and you know what? If we'll just have to make do with what we have at that point, and but that's what our sh we're, we're shooting for, right? Good plan. Well, we're, you've trying, you've made it clear to me anyway. Hopefully, to the folks watching, that you work really hard to measure the amount of spending and use the money as carefully as you can. And we're hoping that they will return that uh, by approving the millage. Yeah, I mean, you know, again, I know it's. It's hard. I mean, we're, it's hit us all, myself included, my, you know, my family, and, um, but it's what we do as far as we we need the, we need funding to continue to provide the service, exactly. and our community continues to grow, and we're getting busier than we've ever been, mm -hmm. and you know we're just trying to do our best without without trying to gouge people. Yep. You know, I I appreciate the tasks. Yep. I do. You know, um, so. Yeah. Well, we want to thank you for taking the time. I know you got a lot going on today. We hope that you all, we all, will vote and uh, keep this operation running well. So thank you, Chief. Thank I you. appreciate your day. Thank you. Thanks thank for you. coming by. Take care. Hello, this is Chuck Cameron and Rod Charles. Rod, thanks for stopping in today. I appreciate your time. My pleasure to stop and see you guys. I appreciate being invited. Excellent. So the whole view from the top is what, what do the folks who are watching our programming need to know about what's happening locally? So you, you have a lot of hats you wear in our communities, Rod. Of the things that you're involved in, what do you think are the, are the things that folks would want to know most about Re, you know, now. Right Tell now. us a look. Well, let me preface by saying I'm speaking for myself. I'm not speaking for any board that I'm a member of. I sure. think that's a critical thing because that makes good sense. You know, I'm on the Oxford Township Board. I'm on Oxford Addison Youth Assistance. I'm on Oakland County Executive Committee, and I'm on the DDA. But I'm speaking for myself, not yeah. for any of those entities. All right. And then you asked about what are some important issues coming up right now. Yeah. Um, well, we have the election coming up pretty soon, right. exactly. and I want to say too. Actually, we have the election going on right now because of the recent amendment that says we have nine days of early voting. Yep. And so it's not November 5th anymore, is it? Uh, I was down in Oregon the other day to, uh, for a meeting, and there, were a long, there was a long line of people from Oxford, really? Brandon, yeah. and Addison Townships voting early. Yeah. And I think that's pretty cool. Uh, a friend of mine in Rochester sent me a photograph from the Rochester Library where Rochester folks vote. There's a long line, nice, beautiful, sunny day. Yeah. They got it taken care of. Uh, now, I think nine days are a little bit overkill, but <laughs> yes. I, I, I like the concept. And for people who wonder why we have this, I know at the township, it makes the clerk's job a little bit, I hope, easier because they do work pretty diligently at Oxford Township. Uh, the idea that if we have nine days, oh, I'm sorry, let me back up by saying we have our voting in Orion right now for us, those of us who live in Oxford because it's very hard to get facilities to have voting. In today's world, you can't have strangers walk around schools anymore for voting, right? Correct. That'd be a real dicey considering all the things that would happen. And in the past, we'd use churches. Well, if we have nine days early voting and you have a Sunday church service. You can't do that. Yeah, you can't do that. You know, it'd be kind of interesting to do, but I don't think it'd be quite, quite right. So what our clerk i think this is a smart idea from mr wright is he contacted orion township so we put it together so people can vote there it's close it's right on joslin and it's very very easy to take care of sure we talked with him a week or so ago about this event and he spoke in some detail about all the actions that he and his office had to take to accommodate the new rules it's there's a lot of work that goes into making all this possible and following the rule and he's he's clear that uh, they're fully willing and able to meet the laws but it's just required a lot of extra work right and, and I'll, I'll say this it also saves us money as taxpayers because when we have elect workers they get paid 
sector. So you know, it, it, it makes it more efficient and it saves us a few bucks. Got so it. I think it's a, it's a good deal, though, as I said, I think nine days was a little bit overkill, but it is what it is. We work with it. Yeah, the law is the law, whether or not somebody else voted on it. They didn't call me. But, all right. All right. Uh, well, past that, what, what yeah. other things do you think that are going on locally are of interest to folks? Um, I understand there's a library, there's, there's all kinds of other things that are happening in town that need to have people come out and vote on it, right? Right. Uh, you mentioned library. The issue there in a number of townships is that the forms to apply to run for library board were changed slightly, and there were some errors, so now it's all right in. Yep. Uh, then we've got, in Oxford Village, we've got two seats, one candidate. Other things coming up locally, Oakland County Parks and Recreation has a property tax increase. Mm -hmm. uh, Oxford Township has a millage for fire department. For fire, yeah. And then we've got one for sidewalks, or which we call safety paths nowadays. Right. There's a property tax possible for that. And then the, I think the hot issue right now would be the uh, garbage pickup, single yeah. hauler, which there's pros and cons to that. Sure. So we, our folks in our communities, which is a tight-knit group of communities, have to make a lot of decisions that there might be different views on. But our goal is to encourage you folks out here who are watching this to just go and vote. Take your stand, make your selections, because if we don't vote, we, uh, we forfeit the right to complain a little bit because we, we have to stand up and take a vote. So would you say that's a fair as assessment? That's, that's a, an assessment, and I would take it to the next level. Go ahead. The next level is to get involved. Yes. And getting involved doesn't mean putting comments on social media. Uh, bravo, thank you. Getting involved says, hey, there's a lot of volunteer opportunities out there. Yeah. And they don't take all your time. They don't grab your entire body every day, all week. Yeah. You could be on a committee that meets once a month. Yeah. That, yeah. That's a huge issue. And it's so easy. And to say committee sometimes sounds bad, but you can say group. Yeah. And I would encourage people to do that. And it doesn't have to be political. Yeah. It could be something that says, hey, I'm going to help out at one event. Yeah. So what getting you, involved is the next step. Yeah, and I appreciate that insight. You, you, <clears throat> you, live, you <clears throat> live your opinion because you've gotten involved with a lot of things, but there are so many people in these communities we've talked to here in the, in the studio who have done just that. They've had a thought and they say, I wanna, I wanna help out. So I appreciate that point. I think we'll kind of wind it up with that, but not only just vote, but get involved, do something, raise your hand and say, I'd like to help. So we- and I'm, gonna, I'm gonna plagiarize that statement you just made. Please. You just said, live your vote. You know, get out there and do something. Yeah. You can vote. And you can also help out and live, live what you Excellent. believe. Excellent. See, once again, unified in all things, or well, at least some things. So, Rod, thank you for stopping in. We, we always appreciate your work in, in the community, and I always appreciate talking to you. So thank you. Likewise. Take care. So from Rod, this is Chuck saying, stay with us. That's it for today on A View from the Top. We'll see you next time.